Hey, how you doing today, guys? Welcome back to another day of actually a great map. Today we're going to keep talking about surface area of prisms in this case. We're going to be looking at more rectangular, cubes, and triangular prisms. So we're going to be talking about, again, rectangular prisms, square or cubes prisms, and triangular prisms. This is going to be the same thing as the previous video that we talked about. I'll leave a link for you over here. We're also going to be using the same formulas as we did before, and that's going to be given to you on your A-grade reference material. And we have the prisms. The lateral area is going to be perimeter of the base times the height, and the total surface area will be perimeter of the base times the height plus two times the base. That's how you find the surface area. Same formulas as yesterday, and this is the assignment that we worked on yesterday. Before we start, I would like to go ahead and invite you to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. Also, if you haven't seen my other channel, MTV Alex, I would like for you to go ahead and check it out. I'll leave a link for you up here. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get this started. I'm going to be working on three problems today, similar to the ones that you're going to be working on. I'm going to be focusing on number two, seven, and eight. That way you guys can work on number three, four, five, six and nine and then you can do the other ones as well number one as well so for number one we're gonna be doing it a little bit different uh, once i have the video i'll leave it up for you over here because i'm gonna teach you a different way to actually do this correct and we're gonna get into that on the next video make sure you check that other video out when it comes up so let's okay so let's see number two we have a train a rectangular prism so that means that we have a box and again, the formulas that we're going to use is going to be to find the lateral and the total surface area. I'm just going to go straight to the total surface area because when we do it, we can go ahead and find the lateral surface area once we are done with that. So the first thing that I want you to do is I want you to draw the base on the side. And in this case, we're going to use the base that is already shaded in a gray right here. That's going to be my base because it's already given to me. So I'm going to draw this on the side. And I'm gonna label it this is 13 and this is 3 those are the only two number numbers that I'm gonna be using right now so I have to find the perimeter and the area of the base every time you have a problem of surface area or volume do this separately that way you can just plug the numbers into the formula and be done with it so for the perimeter I'm looking at this for this step right here I'm only looking at this formula I mean at this shape so for the perimeter, if the bottom is 13, the top is also 13. If the side is 3, then this is also 3. And to find the perimeter, all we got to do is add everything up. So 13 plus 13 plus 3 plus 3. 13 and 13, that's 26. 3 and 3, that's 6. 26 plus 3, I mean plus 6, gives me 32. So the P, uppercase P, is going to be 32. Now for my uppercase B, the area of the base is going to be area equals base times height. And I'm still looking at this shape only. I don't care about the prism right now. So base is going to be 13 times 3. And when I multiply 13 times 3, I get 39. So now I have my P and I have the B. And I'm going to substitute those values into the formula. The formula says surface area equals pH plus 2B. The number 2 is in relation to how many bases do I have. If I have one at the bottom, then I also have one at the top. That's why the number 2 comes into play. So all we got to do is substitute the values in. Instead of P, I'm going to use 32. And instead of... Uh, B, I'm going to use 39. So I'm going to use 32 times the height. The height is the only number that we haven't used. In this case, we already used the 13 and the 3. The only number that I haven't used is going to be this one right here. And that's the height of the prism. The H is for the prism. The distance between the two bases just like when we talked about volume so 
the height is going to be 7 plus 2 times the base, which is 39. When you multiply 32 times 7, you get 224 plus 2 times 39 gives you 78. And all you got to do now is add those two and you get 302 centimeters squared. That is the total surface area. Now if we ask you to find the lateral surface area, it's very simple. Look at this section right here. That's the formula for surf, uh, lateral surface area and that is this number right there. So my lateral surface area will be 224 centimeters square. And just as a reminder, the lateral surface area is always going to be less than the total surface area. Because on the lateral, you're not counting everything. On the total, you are counting everything. That's how you know, if you're getting some, a weird number right there, you know you gotta think about it. Well, on the lateral, I'm not counting everything, so it has to be less than the total. Let's look at another sample. We have number, if you have any problem, uh, questions so far about number two, leave them down in the comments below. If you know a different way to do it, I would like to know how you do it. That way I can teach that in my class as well. Pretty sure, Matt, you can do it in many, many different ways. Let's look at number seven. We have a triangular prism. How do I know it's a triangular prism? Because if I look at the base, it's the shape of a triangle. In this case, a right triangle. Mm -hmm. And for the sake of simplicity, we're going to call this to be an equilateral triangle. On the next video that I was telling you about at the beginning of the video, I'm going to go more into depth about number one, which is going to be very similar to this. But for right now, we're going to focus on this one and say that it's going to be equilateral. And the other video is going to make more sense. So, let's look at what we have over here. So, again, we're going to draw this shape on the side. This is 5 5 and I said this is equilateral so I'm going to name it this back here to be 5 as well okay so again we're going to find the perimeter and the area of the base for the perimeter you see all you have again we're looking at this option right now I don't care about this yet I don't care about that prism right now I'm only focused on the base so for the perimeter, all I have to do is add the sides. In this case, 5, 5, and 5. 5 times 3 is 15. Now for the area of the base, area equals base times height divided by 2. Okay? So we're going to take the base and the height of the base, which is going to be 5 times 5 divided by 2. 5 times 5 is 25 divided by 2, so V, uppercase V, is going to be 12.5. Now, I care about this one right here. And I'm going to mark off the numbers that I have already used and circle the one that I have not used. Because for this, again, we are going to use the same formula. Surface area equals pH plus 2B. I know P is going to be 15. The height is going to be the 10. That's the distance between the two bases. So this is my height right there. Plus 2 times 2 bases, right? And the area of the base we said is 12.5. So now I have to multiply 15 times 10 gives me 150 plus 2 times 12.5, but that's just going to be what? 25. So my total surface area after I add those two is going to be 175 units squared. That simple. Now, if I need to find just the lateral surface area, remember this is the formula 
for lateral surface area. So my lateral surface area will be 150 units square. So basically the lateral surface area is only gonna be the rectangles and not the triangles. All right, we're gonna do number eight. It's similar but different. It's kind of the same but a little bit different because it's not a right triangle. We have an isosceles triangle. Wait, no, it's not even an isosceles triangle. All sides are, yes, it is an isosceles triangle. So let's look at number eight. We have this is my base, okay? The distance between the two bases is gonna be my height. So I'm gonna draw my base on the side, just like before, and I'm gonna label it. This is three, this is 2.5, but now we have a number right here, and this number is two. And that's gonna be very important. Right now, we are only looking at this. I don't care about this right now. So again, we're gonna find the perimeter. The perimeter is gonna be the sum of the sides. So if this is 2.5 right here, this right here on the side is also 2.5 because it's an isosceles triangle, right? Two sides are the same. So for the perimeter, I'm gonna do 2.5 plus 2.5 plus 3. Notice I did not use that 2 because the 2 is not outside and the perimeter is for the outside. Make sure you're paying attention on that. We're going to use the 2 in a little bit. So whenever I add this up I get 8. 2.5 plus 2.5 is 5 plus 3 is 8. Now I'm going to find the area of the base. B equals base times height divided by 2. Now, I got to look at the triangle and look at the base. Where is the base of this triangle? Well, my base is going to be right here at the bottom. And that number is going to be 3. And the height is going to be, how tall is that triangle? Not the slant height. The 2.5, that's going to be the slant height. I don't need that one. I need to know if I cut that piece of triangle and put it, stand it up, how tall is that thing gonna be? In this case, it's gonna be two. This number right there. That's why this thing is pointing right here. And it has a line right there. It's telling me that that triangle, that base, the flat thing is two units tall. Please do not get that one confused with the prism height. Because if you do, you're going to get it wrong. But that's why I draw it on the side and only focus on this thing in this part of the process. Okay? Now, and then divide by 2. So 3 times 2 is 6. Divided by 2 gives me again 3. Basically, these two cancels out. So now I found the P. I found B. I can go ahead and solve the formula. S equals PH plus 2B. P is 8. The height of the prism. Now we're working at this thing right here. The H is 10 plus 2 times the B, which is 3. 8 times 10, that's just 80. Plus 2 times 3 is 6. So the total surface area is going to be 86. Mister, again, how do you find the lateral surface area once I did the whole thing? Remember, this right here, that's the formula for lateral surface area. So my lateral surface area is going to be 80. And again, it's less than the total surface area. All right, so I hope that you learned something today. It gives you, I hope that this gives you a little more confidence on tackling these type of problems. If you learned something today, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. Don't forget to subscribe and, and smash the notification bell on so you don't miss any future content. Um, again, we're gonna, on the next video, we're gonna talk about number one, doing it the proper way and not treating it as an equilateral triangle because we're gonna incorporate multiple topics that we talk about on A grade. So stay tuned for that video. 
Other than that, if you had any questions, please leave them down in the comments below. Share with somebody else who needs this information. That is it for this one, guys. And I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.